this improved second generation version of Audi's devastatingly quick RS3 provides the entry point into the brand's formidable RS performance range and features the most powerful production five-cylinder engine in Ingolstadt's history. Plus, there's more technology, less weight, smarter looks and a more sophisticated interior. The result is a compact performance car that once again claims class-leading status and aims once more to rewrite the shopping rocket rulebook. Did anyone ever imagine that one day a model of this size would offer what would once have been seen as supercar style power? In this improved second generation Audi RS3, that's just what you get. Four wheel drive, formidable performance and 400 PS. You heard that last figure right. More than any car of this kind has ever offered before, courtesy of an engine that really sets this model apart in this segment. Now, that isn't only because of its total output figure, like V8s for AMG or straight sixes in BMW M cars. A tuned five-cylinder unit is part of the DNA of a division that was once called Quattro GmbH, but which is now known as Audi Sport, the Ingolstadt brand's performance division. That, of course, was the configuration used for the classic Quattro Coupe that first established Audi's engineering credentials back in the 80s. And the brand returned to it when, at the beginning of the century's second decade, the time came to expand its RS performance model lineup. Leading the charge in that regard was this car's predecessor, the original first generation RS3 Sportback of 2012. This model used its 2.5 litre five cylinder engine to become one of the very first hot hatches to break through the 300 PS barrier, offering 341 PS on what was then seen as quite shocking levels of performance. Customers loved it and Audi sold four times as many as it thought it was going to. Journalists though didn't criticising the car's soulless dynamics, lifeless steering and general lack of agility. A model of this kind, they told Audi, had to be about more than just ultimate grip and prodigious speed. The RS Racing Sport badge deserves something better. We got exactly that in 2015 with the original version of this second generation RS3 model. Power was up to 377 PS, but primarily development was centered on improvements to the driving experience. Now to aid agility, the car was lightened, while at the same time, the S-Tronic Auto Gearbox and the Quattro four-wheel drive system were redeveloped for faster reactions. Plus adaptive damping became optional. It ought to have been a recipe for the ultimate super hatch, and it would have been had it not been for the subsequent introduction of a revised, more powerful 386 PS version of this car's closest rival, the Mercedes-AMG A45. The RS3 might have been vastly better, but it still couldn't claim complete class leadership. Perhaps this significantly improved second generation design can though for the second generation RS version of their TT sports car launched in 2016, Audi Sport completely redeveloped their 2.5 litre five cylinder engine. And the result was a switch to a significantly lighter aluminium block and a 33 PS increase in power to 400 PS. The obvious next move was to stick that power plant in the RS3, add a few styling tweaks and re-establish its class leading credentials. That's the thinking that's led to the creation of the model that we're testing here, now available in saloon guys as well as in this sportback body style. Is it once again the ultimate car of its kind? Let's find out. What exactly should a super hatch of this kind be? Fast? Yes, that of course, but what if you want more? What if you want an experience? pleasurable thrill every time you start it up or poke the throttle. For all its faults, this has been the thing we've always liked about the Audi RS3. Its five-cylinder turbocharged four-wheel drive recipe having continually been an undeniably evocative one. Time to fire up today's Quattro and see what's in store. 
This improved second generation RS3 model's potent burble is just as soulful as that of its predecessor. Or at least it is in a car like this one, fitted with the optional RS Sports exhaust system. The five pop melody is certainly more satisfying than the strained four cylinder rasp offered by direct ultimate shopping rocket rivals like Ford's Focus RS and most notably the Mercedes AMG A45. Which is a touch ironic as these cars, according to much of the motoring press at least, are more involving emotional purchases than this one. Are these people right? They certainly used to be. The original first generation version of this car was undeniably quick in a straight line and went around corners on rails, but you got out of the car after a frantically rapid drive without a backward glance. When this second generation model was first launched in 2015, it was immediately clear that Audi Sport had added a considerable amount of extra handling finesse to the grip and grunt of its predecessor. That came courtesy of a stiffer MQB platform, a faster shifting S-Tronic uh, twin clutch paddle shift auto gearbox, and a completely redeveloped electromechanical progressive steering system, capable of varying its ratio with steering input in a way in intended to emphasize the quick-witted feel. Also included was a torque vectoring system for extra cornering traction and a drive select vehicle dynamic system allowing the variance of throttle, gear shift and steering feel, a setup into which, on request, the option of Audi magnetic ride adaptive damping could be added. All of this was great, but arguably not quite enough. Four-wheel drive compact performance models that sit in this high-powered segment are primarily all about the clever ways that they can transmit torque to the tarmac. Take the rival Ford Focus RS, for example, which gives you a high-tech torque vectoring rear power split device and the option of a delicious drift mode for tyre-smoking slides. Then there's the Mercedes AMG A45 that has the option of a limited slip differential that'll stop torque slip and fire you from bend to bend. When ranked against this kind of technology, the RS3's familiar Haldex clutch quattro four-wheel drive system with its conventional open differential might seem a little lightweight in some eyes. Even though it's been revised in recent times with a faster reacting rearward bias and the capability of sending up to 100% of torque to either axle. If you're a potential buyer and that's your perspective, Audi hopes you'll see this improved second generation model's completely redesigned engine as the perfect mask for any perceived technological shortcomings. It's still five cylinders in format and 2.5 litres in size, but it now has a much lighter all aluminium block and puts out far more power and torque. The original Mark II model's figures, they were 377 PS and 465 Newton meters, rise here to 400 PS and 480 Newton meters. As a result, assuming you've ticked the box for the optional de-restricted speed limiter and you've a runway to hand, it'll keep you going until you hit 174 miles an hour. In this revised range, there's a choice of having this car in saloon form as well as in this five-door sportback hatch guise. The four-door model has a wider rear axle track than the hatch, as well as a slightly lower roofline and a lower roll axis, but not by much. The five-door version is the lighter of the two, but only by five kilograms. Either way, the performance on offer is explosive with a launch control assisted rest to 62 mile an hour sprint time of 4.1 seconds. That's quicker than the original V8 version of Audi's R8 supercar. And Porsche 911 style performance that throws you at the horizon from the point that the rich base heavy five cylinder roar fills the cabin and the turbo gets into its stride. There's also a power to weight ratio that eclipses elite machinery like Maserati's GT and dispatches B-Road dawdlers with barely a thought. But you won't really gauge the character of this Audi from any of that. You see, we've driven faster cars than this, but very few that we wanted to drive this quickly. At the wheel of this machine, you're suddenly transported into a world where you complete a twisting section of your favorite country road. I wonder whether a Hamilton, an Alonso or a Vettel could really have driven it much quicker. 
you subconsciously know, of course, how much the car is compensating for your ham-fistedness, but somehow it really doesn't seem to matter. You have, at that moment, a glorious, if slightly dangerous, feeling of invincibility. For such a journey, you have, of course, selected the dynamic mode in the drive select system to quicken the reactions of the steering and the quattro four-wheel drive system, as well as sharpening the throttle response to unleash the full turbo boost pressure on offer. The same mode uh, releases a sound flap in the exhaust to intensify the glorious crackling soundtrack still further as you flip up and down the seven-speed twin-clutch S-Tronic semi-automatic gearbox via F1-style steering wheel mounted paddles. It's a route you might perhaps have covered a tenth or two quicker in, say, a BMW M3 or indeed any supercar. But at the end of it, your palms and forehead would likely be sweaty, your heart pumping furiously, instead of which your mind is still, Mozart's on the stereo, and you're free to return to rumination on the kind of day whose toil has doubtless made purchase of a 45,000 pound hot hatch possible in the first place. You know this car isn't perfect, of course. The steering still needs more feel and the ride in dynamic mode, though improved over the Mark I model, still crashes over bumps you should flow through, suggesting that this RS3 was designed more for racetrack use than maybe it should have been. You can forgive this if there's the opportunity to select a more supple setting for those times when you really don't want to feel every tear and ripple in the tarmac. That's a requirement that you can satisfy by specifying the extra cost RS Sport suspension with Audi Magnetic Ride adaptive damping setup that works through the various settings of the Drive Select driving mode system. We think it's a must-have option because without it, the firm passive RS suspension can toss you around quite uncomfortably over poor surfaced roads. It's perfect for a track, of course, but then in truth, for all its speed, this isn't really any kind of satisfying circuit car. It never was, and it still isn't. On track, you turn into a corner and the thing grips and goes. That's it. For all Audi's talk of the revised Quattro system being able to shunt torque around between the axles to liven things up, the reality is that there's no real adjustability or challenge, the kind of thing you'd get in, say, a rival Ford Focus RS or even a lesser Megane Renault Sport. We'll take that, though, given that neither of these two hot hatches can hold a candle to this Audi as a ballistically quick day-to-day -day road car. A Mercedes-AMG A45 offers a closer match but it's less subtle and appealing both to look at and to listen to. Ultimately then, what we've ended up with is a real world supercar, exactly as Audi intended. If you've got it, you shouldn't need to shout about it, or, or so Audi believes. Hence the subtlety of the changes made to Sportback and Saloon versions of this RS3 to differentiate them from their equally low-key S3 stablemates. Now, some might feel this car is too pared back and that for the kind of money being asked, you should be able to be rewarded with a bit more drama. That's one view. Another might well be that if you've got to the point in life where you can afford to spend a substantial amount on a very fast four-door or performance hatch, you might well be done with worrying about who notices you or what they think of your purchasing decisions. And it's with this kind of customer in mind that the RS3 wears its ornamentation lightly. Now, the major points of differentiation lie at the front, where the three-dimensional black honeycomb grille here lacks the bright aluminium crossbars that feature on other A3 variants and gets quattro lettering along its lower edge. Underneath, this blade flows just above the lower splitter uh, right into these more purposeful looking lower corner air intakes. These also feature honeycombed mesh trimming and at their outer edges incorporate these extra lateral air inlets that aim to make the car look more aggressive and emphasize its wider front track. Further up are full LED headlamps, styled with this more distinctive jagged lower edge design and able to optionally include Audi's intelligent matrix technology that'll adapt the beam to changing road conditions. 
Moving round to the side, you get these sculpted side sills, emphasising the way that this car sits 25 millimetres lower to the ground than would any ordinary S3. Uh, the flared front arches are supposed to evoke memories of the look of the original 80s Quattro Coupe, and they house 19-inch alloy wheels as standard, with a blade design for saloon models, and this rotor finish on sportback variants. Either way, peeking out between the spokes, you'll spy black painted calipers branded with RS logos, which can be coloured red if preferred. At the back, Audi experts will quickly spot the vertically running struts of the more distinctive rear diffuser, which at either corner swaps the twin exhausts of the S3 for huge oval elliptic single tailpipes. The roof spoiler is far less subtle on this super hatch variant too, and slim reflectors now adorn the trailing edge of the reprofiled bumper. Now, of course, the more important design elements lie beneath all this tinsel. Principally here, we're talking about the light, stiff Volkswagen Group MQB chassis that, as before, this model rides upon. It's a clever piece of kit composed of a hybrid of steel and aluminium panels and is the part of the car that contributes most to the 60 kilogram weight saving that Audi engineers were able to make in developing the original version of this third generation design. Now let's get behind the wheel and let Audi weave the little spell it likes to lay on you before you've even turned the key of this RS3, or in this case, push the starter button. Now, it's all in the details. The flat-bottomed leather and Alcantara-trimmed RS Sport steering wheel with its contrast stitching is, of course, bespoke. So are the stainless steel pedals, the RS gear lever, and the illuminated RS door sill trims. Otherwise, the ambience is exactly as it would be in any plushly specified A3 model. Certainly, the feel of this cabin will be familiar to anybody who understands Audi design language with its minimalist look, its lack of button clutter and the four characteristic chrome trimmed circular air vents that punctuate the dash. In fact, wherever you look or whatever you touch or feel, there are treats. Buttons click nicely, column stalks feel good, and the low rent plastics that you'd find further down in most premium rivals are noticeable by their absence. We do think though that these paddle shifters that you get behind the steering wheel could be nicer. They're exactly the same as those you get on any other DSG auto-equipped Volkswagen Group model. Something more tactile would surely have been more appropriate in a variant of this calibre. We think storage space could be better too. The glove box is small, particularly when, as here, it's filled with media stuff, and the door bins are rather compact as well. We'd make the same comment about the console box between the front seats, though it is a useful place to put your phone, thanks to the provision of an aux in point and twin USB sockets. Now, if you've gone for the Audi phone box option, there's even a pad that charges your handset and boosts its reception through the roof aerial. We really like the seats. They come in Nappa leather trim sports form standard, but we'd want to find the extra for these brilliant winged diamond quilted super sports chairs. Now they're anatomically shaped and perfectly position you to view another standard cockpit highlight, the all digital Audi virtual cockpit. You may be familiar with this setup from some of the brand's other models. Here at Standard, a 12.3 inch LCD color monitor that replaces the usual instrument binnacle dials with a layout that's fully digital and customizable using smart 3D graphics and highly detailed effects. Now it can be viewed in three ways. Uh, the classic display shows the usual speedometer, rev counter and gear indicator readouts. Alternatively, the progressive display reduces the size of these items and brings functions like the navigation map or your media settings to the fore. RS3 buyers also get a third RS display that prioritizes the rev counter. You can then configure other elements around it, such as readouts for torque in Newton meters, power in percent, tire pressures and g-forces. If the gearbox is in manual mode, green, orange and red segments will be illuminated sequentially as the revs rise and just before the rev limiter cuts in, the entire scale will flash red. Uh, now you may be seeing this a lot if you're on track and using the provided lap timer. Anything the virtual cockpit setup can't tell you will almost certainly be covered off by the center dash MMI infotainment display. 
Appropriately, this flagship A3 model includes Audi's top MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch package with its seven inch monitor gliding smoothly from the top of the dash and featuring crisp 3D maps and responsive Nvidia graphics. If you don't want to cover the thing with sticky fingerprints, there's voice activation, steering wheel buttons, and of course the usual chrome-edged rotary controller uh, just below the gear stick, which with this premium MMI package comes with a surface on which commands can be traced by your fingertips. The use useful Audi smartphone interface is of course incorporated with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring connectivity, allowing everything that you access on your handset to be duplicated onto the centre dash screen. And the impressive Audi Connect system is also included, via which you'll be able to use a whole raft of 4G online Wi-Fi options powered by a super fast LTE module that'll give you download speeds of up to 100 megabits per second. Let's take a seat in the back. If you're going to be regularly using the rear compartment in your RS3, you probably need to have opted for this Sportback model rather than the alternative saloon body style because the roof line uh, is 12 millimeters higher, which obviously makes getting in a little bit easier. Once inside, you're reminded that though you may have devoted a Porsche-sized budget to the purchase of this car, you have in return still only been given a Focus or Astra-sized conveyance. And as with most cars of that size, you don't get a huge amount of room to spread out. A six-footer can sit behind an equally lanky driver, but it's a fairly snug fit. And as you'd expect from this class of car, three across the back here only really works if the people concerned are of school going age. This high center transmission tunnel certainly doesn't help in that regard. A pair of modestly proportioned adults would enjoy reasonable comfort though. Finally, let's take a look at the boot which is 335 litres in size if you go for this Sportback variant. That's five litres less than you get in an equivalent S3 Sportback. The cargo floor is flat and the opening between the wheel arches measures fully 100 centimetres, so you might well find yourself being able to fit in more than expected. A standard, RS3 models get what Audi calls a storage pack, which gives you a stowage net in the cargo area sidewall, plus another that you can spread across the boot to keep small items in place. Opting for the saloon body style means you have to compromise quite a bit on cargo volume. Even though the trunk area is 170 millimetres longer than that of this Sportback, the total capacity figure with that variant falls down to 315 litres, down from 390 litres in a four-door S3. Now, whatever body style you choose, there's of course the option of pushing forward the rear seat backs if you want to free up more room. For flexibility with this Sportback, it would have been nice to see a 40-20-40 split offered, at least as an option, so that longer items could be pushed through into the cabin without disturbing a couple of rear seated occupants. As it is, you merely get the usual 60-40 split arrangement. Now, once everything's flat, you'll have up to 1,175 litres of room to play with. If you never expected a car of this kind to offer as much as 400 PS, you probably also never expected a model of this sort to cost as much as 45,000 pounds. We certainly never did. Still, the take up that the Mercedes AMG brand has lately enjoyed on various trimmed up A45 and CLA45 models has showed that a small but significant bank of discerning customers aren't necessarily averse to paying up to £50,000 for an ultimate hot hatch or small super saloon model in this segment. Audi Sport reckons that globally over 40% of RS3 sales will be for the saloon variant, but in our market you can expect that figure to be somewhat lower, aided by the fact that this Sportback version enjoys a £950 price saving over its four-door showroom stablemate. Enough to mostly fund purchase of the one significant option that this car shouldn't be without, but we'll get to that in a minute. 
Before we do, you'll be wanting to know just how the asking figure required here for ownership compares to the fee required for this model's most obvious rivals. And you might also be interested to know that it represents a premium of around £7,500 over what you'd pay for the next model down in the sporting section of Audi's A3 model range, the 310 PS S3. As for direct rivals to this RS, well, we've already mentioned the key Mercedes-AMG competition. That Stuttgart brand's A45 and the CLA45 models front up with a 386 PS 2.0-litre unit, offering very similar performance to what's on offer here. Their A45 costs around £2,500 less than this RS3 Sportback, while their CLA45 costs around £600 more than the RS3 Saloon. Other competitors aren't really as closely matched to what's on offer here. The magazines will mention Ford's Focus RS, which at around £33,000 is considerably cheaper, but only offers 350 PS and is over half a second slower to 62 miles an hour than this Audi. More significantly, it doesn't have the premium quality understated image of this Ingolstadt product, which of course is primarily what you're paying for. We think BMW's M2 is probably a closer match to the RS3 buying demographic, but again, what's on offer isn't really the same kind of package. It has six cylinders with 375 PS and comes only in coupe form with rear wheel drive. If having considered all of that, you're starting to be convinced by the RS3 proposition, then there are a few justifications we can give you that might help. Firstly, the impressive residual values you can expect from this car actually make it a reasonably affordable ownership proposition over, say, a three-year period. And second, if you were already considering an Audi S3, then once you spec that car up to the standard that you're looking at here, the price premium to get this RS3 model's extra performance isn't actually all that great. Ah oh, yes, spec. Let's get to that. Now, as you'd expect, there's Quattro permanent four-wheel drive and an S-Tronic auto gearbox, plus firmer RS sport suspension and an RS braking setup. There's also an RS version of the brand's drive select vehicle dynamic system that allows you to tweak throttle steering and gear shift timings to suit the way you want to drive. And there's a progressive steering package that regulates steering feel according to driving conditions, improving directional stability as you turn into a bend. A full RS body styling kit also comes as part of the deal, including the subtle but significant changes that set this car apart from its lesser S3 sporting stablemate. That means a bespoke front bumper and spoiler, plus there's a honeycomb design grille between full LED headlights that feature integrated washers. In profile, you'll spy side sill extensions complemented by lovely 19-inch five-arm design alloy wheels. And at the rear, there are LED rear lights, plus a roof spoiler and a rear diffuser flanked by the potent-looking oval tailpipes of the RS dual branch exhaust system. Inside, standard features include embossed Nappa leather trim with contrasting stitching and heated front sport seats with cushion angle adjustment and extendable thigh support. The brand also throws in uh, the Audi Parking System Plus acoustic and visual front and rear parking sensors, along with various storage nets and an aluminium trim finishing pack. More aluminium features on the pedals and there's illuminated door sill trim and titanium grey 3D interior inlays. Plus a three-spoke flat-bottomed leather and Alcantara stitched RS steering wheel through which you view a set of all digital Audi virtual cockpit instrument dials that here include an RS specific menu. You'd have to pay extra for that virtual cockpit feature on an S3. And also extra cost on that car would be this RS3's standard top line MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch media connectivity setup. Now it works via a seven inch center dash screen and includes integrated 3D navigation, a 10 gigabyte jukebox, a DVD player and voice recognition. In addition, you get three years of access to the suite of Audi Connect infotainment services. 
Now, Addy Connect is something we really need to tell you a bit more about. It gives you an LTE data transmission module that establishes high speed 4G internet 3 access and creates in this RS3 a Wi Fi hotspot. It also allows you to navigate with images from Google Earth, access a Google points of interest search function with voice control, and use a web radio setup with stations from all around the world. Through the Connect system, you can access special in-car versions of your Facebook and Twitter pages, and it's possible to read, write, and send text messages and emails. The included online media streaming package gives access to millions of music tracks, and there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system that uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. Plus, the setup can also deliver parking information, uh, displaying details on parking lots and parking garages almost anywhere you're likely to go. Otherwise, it's all much as you would get in any normal high-spec Audi A3 model, which means you get features like auto headlamps and wipers, uh, climate control, a keyless go push-button starter, uh, cruise control with a speed limiter, and an auto dimming rear view mirror. As you'd expect from this class of car, the infotainment package integrates Bluetooth phone connectivity, uh, access to the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems, and a 10-speaker, 180-watt DAB Audi sound system. All of it controllable either via the MMI controller by voice through buttons on the multifunction leather stitch steering wheel, or via that center dash color touchscreen. You're going to want to go further than that though, virtually all RS3 buyers do. Earlier we mentioned the lack of a key feature you're really going to want with this car, so we'll start our perusal of the options catalogue with that. The Ingolstadt brand calls the element in question RS Sport Suspension with Audi Magnetic Ride. We simply call it adaptive damping. Whatever your terminology, it's an addition that we think you really need to make to this car, working through the modes of the drive select dynamic setup we mentioned earlier and completing its functionality by enabling you to tailor suspension feel to suit the road that you're on. Now, without this, the ride of this Audi can become an irritatingly firm partner on poor tarmac, on those occasions when you're not in the mood for heroics and simply want to cruise home. We'd go as far as to say that in future on the used market, some potential buyers will probably often ignore examples of this car that haven't been specified with this package. Nearly as essential and extra in our view is the Rorty RS Sport exhaust system we've been trying here. Come on, why wouldn't you? Another optional feature fitted here that future buyers would probably also quite like to see is the clever RS Matrix LED headlight system. These matrix lights are a real nighttime talking point, incorporating sensors and an inbuilt camera that detects other road users as well as ambient light in built up areas. The beams then react by dipping individual LEDs to prevent dazzle while still fully illuminating the remainder of the road. They even draw from the vehicle's navigation data to anticipate corners, adjusting LEDs as you negotiate the bend. Other desirable items that RS3 buyers might want to look at include a panoramic glass sunroof, powered seat adjustment, four-way electric lumbar support, a reversible mat to protect the boot floor, uh, power folding mirrors, and the Audi phone box system that wirelessly charges your handset and boosts its reception. We'd pass on the opportunity though to pay Audi considerably more to delete the 155 mile an hour top speed restrictor and raise maximum velocity to 174 miles an hour. A £1,600 fee seems an exorbitant amount just to tweak a line of software code. If you want to rather pointlessly waste even more money, what about looking at the £4,700 increment needed to equip this car with a set of ceramic brakes? Yes, these will be useful for regular track warriors, but otherwise the sophisticated discs are a poor investment. Better options can be found in the comfort and sound pack that gives you a rear view camera, a hill hold assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, an advanced keyless entry system, and a thumping 14 speaker 705 watt Bang & Olufsen sound setup. All four of these items can be ordered separately if you prefer. 
On to aesthetics, and as you'd expect, there's plenty of scope for enhancing the look of the exterior of your RS3. Buyers choose from a series of bespoke paint colours, so you don't have to stick to something fairly conventional like this white finish. Our favourite RS3 shade is Vibrant Viper Green. You'll have your own preference. As for the wheels, well, all the choices share the same 19-inch rim size, but the front tyres can be optioned up to a slightly bigger 255 section size. That's up from 235 section as standard, with 235 section rubber remaining at the rear. Now, if you take up this 255 section option, you'll be able to get the alloy spokes with a diamond cut finish and trimming in either anthracite black or, as in this case, matte titanium. Once that's all sorted out, you'll need to decide whether you want to add in items like privacy glass, red brake calipers and roof rails in black or aluminium. The carbon fibre engine cover would be nice to have too. Uh, as would uh, the matte aluminium styling pack that adds that finish to the front blade and the rear diffuser. There's a gloss black styling pack if you prefer that style of finish. As for the interior, well, make sure you keep some budget back to get yourself a pair of Audi's brilliant winged diamond quilted super sports seats. Extrovert types will want to complement these with the RS design pack that gives you contrasting red stitching for the seats and interior trim, red accents for the air vents, branded floor mats and red edge seat belts. Rather more subtle, is the extended interior upholstery pack, which trims the knee pads and door armrests in stitched leatherette matched to your cabin color choice. As for the interior inlays, well, if you don't like the 3D titanium gray panels that come as standard, you can pay extra to get aluminum race or carbon fiber inlays instead. On to safety. Now there's nothing especially noteworthy about the standard kit tally in this respect, which is the same as you get on an S3. So you'll find all the usual twin front side and head airbags, plus a knee bag for the driver. Rear side bags are optional. You can also expect features like Isofix child seat fastenings, a tyre pressure warning light and an active bonnet designed to reduce pedestrian injuries. The usual electronic assistance for braking and stability control is of course included, as well as adaptive brake lights that flash during emergency stops to warn following motorists. There's also driver rest recommendation technology that assesses your driving style and shows a warning if it detects a decline in attentiveness, prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee. It does seem a bit mean though to make RS3 buyers pay extra for the hill hold assist feature that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And it'd also be nice if the brand could include its clever Audi PreSense basic system that tightens the seat belts, closes the windows and activates the hazard warning lights if the electronics suggest that a crash impact is imminent. Unfortunately, the really sophisticated camera-driven safety features are all on the options list, with eight key items packaged up as part of the driver assistance pack we've been trying here. Perhaps the most significant element is an autonomous braking system. Audi calls it Present Front with Pedestrian Recognition. It's one of those setups that scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards. If one is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, then the system will automatically brake the car to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. There's also Audi Side Assist, which stops you from pulling out to overtake when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Plus, traffic sign recognition, there to picture road signs as you pass and display them on the dash and the really useful traffic jam assist setup that can basically brake, accelerate and steer the car for you in congested traffic at up to 37 miles an hour. The other four included driver assistance pack features will also be pretty familiar to anyone up to speed with modern automotive safety technology. There's high beam assist to automatically dip your headlights in the face of oncoming traffic at night and active lane assist, which works on the highway to sense when you're veering out of your lane and automatically applies gentle steering correction to ease you back to where you should be. Also useful at a cruise is adaptive cruise control, there to automatically keep you a safe distance behind the car in front.
Finally, we'll mention the emergency assist setup that works when the active lane assist and adaptive cruise control systems are active at cruising speeds, monitoring your reactions. Now, if the electronics sense no driver activity, let's say you are suddenly taken ill, for example, then uh, if warnings aren't responded to, the car will be held in lane and gradually, automatically, completely brought to a standstill. It's all very reassuring. When it came to the engine of this car, Audi had two ways it could go. It would certainly have been possible easily to uprate the 2.0-litre TFSI turbo unit already used in the brand's S3 model, as partner brand Volkswagen did with the Golf R400 hot hatch that they developed but ultimately never put on sale. The alternative for Ingolstadt was to do what they ultimately did here, uh, install a far more charismatic but inevitably less efficient bespoke five-cylinder engine that would make the driving experience of this RS3 so much more memorable. So how much has that decision cost Audi when it comes to the all-important issues of fuel economy and CO2 efficiency? Well, let's see. Let's start by establishing a benchmark here, which we'll set at around 40 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 162 grams per kilometre of CO2. Those being exactly the figures returned by a rival 2-litre four-cylinder Mercedes AMG A45, and interestingly, also by that 2-litre four-cylinder Audi S3. This 2.5-litre five-cylinder RS3, in contrast, manages a quoted return of 34.0 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, whatever body style you choose. As for cleanliness, well, RS3 buyers will be looking at a CO2 reading of 188 grams per kilometre for the saloon and 189 grams per kilometre for the sportback. Either way, that equates to quite a sobering benefit-in-kind rating of 36%. Bottom line? that rival Mercedes is far more of an efficient choice. But it simply doesn't sound as exciting as the power plant in this Audi. Time to pay for your pleasures. If it helps in the justification process, we'll tell you that a rival BMW M2 can't match this RS3's efficiency figures, and a Ford Focus RS only just beats them despite the fact that it fronts up with 50 PS less power. This is thanks to a number of factors. Uh, the new aluminium block engine weighs 26 kilograms less than the previous iron block unit. And as with the previous version of this car, you get the benefit of a sophisticated brake energy regeneration system, a demand controlled oil pump and an engine start stop facility, plus a long seventh speed for the S-Tronic auto gearbox. Bear in mind that the stats we've just quoted for this Audi will be fractionally affected if you order your car with the optional wider 255 section front tyres. The RS3's cachet will keep residual value sturdy, in the short term at least. Industry experts CAT reckon that it offers a class-leading residual value figure of 51.5% after the usual three-year 60,000 mile ownership period. That compares with just 42% for this Audi's closest rival, the Mercedes AMG A45. That'll make quite a difference, though if you go too far in expensive options, you'll still feel the pain come resale time. Think in terms of an RS3 costing you around £20,000 in value loss over a three-year ownership term, and you'll be about right. There aren't many comparable high-performance models that can better that, the low depreciation thing is a key factor in making this RS3 a class leader when it comes to pence per mile running costs. CAP reckon that this Sportback variant will cost 52.33 pence per mile over a three year 60,000 mile period, comparing with 54.96 pence per mile for that Mercedes AMG A45. Insurance isn't going to be cheap with a Group 46E rating, meaning hefty premiums. And if you're thinking of doing some track day tyre smoking, bear in mind that the rubber supplied will be fearsomely pricey to replace. What else? What about general maintenance? Audi's flexible service regime for high mileage drivers could mean that you only need an oil change every two years or 19,000 miles. An oil condition sensor on the car determines the service interval for you. 
If you do less than 10,000 miles a year, uh, Audi recommends an annual oil change with a full inspection service at two years or 19,000 miles. Uh, somewhere in that span, the need for an impending garage visit will flash up in the instrument binnacle. In fact, this car can even book its own service appointments via an Audi Connect safety and service system app, as well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance. Uh, this feature can, at the appropriate time, send a service request direct to your local dealer. Alternatively, you can sign up for Audi Service Request, which uses the onboard Wi-Fi to enable your car to communicate with the dealer. As your RS3 nears the time when work will be needed, the diagnostics alert your nominated local Audi Centre, who will then contact you to book in a convenient time. Maintenance costs can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans that you'll be offered at initial purchase. Another neat service that your dealer can offer you is the Audi CAM system. Now here technicians carrying out workshop inspections on your RS3 can focus a handheld Audi CAM camera on specific problems accompanying the image with a verbal diagnosis to create footage that can be sent to your computer or your smartphone. That way you'll know precisely what work you're authorising on your car. On to the warranty. All contenders in this class get three years of cover, but whereas you won't get your mileage limited in this period if you opt for something made by BMW or Mercedes, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Optional extra cost warranty packages can extend the cover to either four years and 75,000 miles or five years and 90,000 miles. If the worst happens and the car breaks down, there's free roadside assistance included for the first 36 months of ownership. Audi will tell you that its RS, or Racing Sport, brand is about innovation, technology and performance. Its customers, though, have told the Ingolstadt maker that they want more than that. Future RS products must also feature three other attributes. Soul, involvement and emotion. Earlier versions of this car came up a little short in these three areas. This one nails them more effectively. Yes, it's very expensive, but very often the people who think that are comparing this car to inferior, less powerful rivals. True, the whole idea of 400 PS in a car of this kind might smack of overkill, but then this Audi is so well executed and so subtle in its outlook that you could own one without anyone realizing that. You'd never be mistaken for a boy racer trying to relive a second motoring childhood. What it all boils down to is that with savage overtaking ability, all-weather capability and a practical side that will endear it to many, this car represents an ideal alternative for well-heeled buyers who've outgrown powerful sports coupes and saloons or ordinary fast hot hatches. And it's amazing to think that this level of astonishing performance represents merely the entry point to RS ownership. And in summary, well, certainly there are other compact high performance models in this segment that might make your heart beat a little faster. The RS3 still trades the last couple of percentage points of focus for genuine everyday utility. But it's also true that while that might make it a couple of seconds slower around the Nürburgring, it also makes it a better car for the vast majority of customers. People who live in the real world. A very fast world indeed. Mm.